today we're going to step aboard the Nordship 40DS. This example is from 2008. A Danish build, the yacht pretty much exudes the quality of build both internally and externally that you would expect from a yacht built in this part of the world. So the yacht is a 40 foot with a raised deck saloon. The wheel is set nicely aft in the yacht leaving a large and relatively clear cockpit. There's a little bowsprit extension there for the anchor, also useful for flying in asymmetric and you've got that little Scandinavian step on the bar as well. As you can see externally the GRP and the teak is all in exemplary condition as is the stainless. The yacht features a sugar scoop stern with a stainless fold down ladder so easy access to dinghy as well. A couple of nice little push pit seats there. And there's a couple of port lights on the transom as well, which give extra light into the aft cabin. So I'm just stepping aboard. A stainless grab rail there, usefully positioned on the coach roof. Side decks are relatively clutter free because the yacht features a self tacking 100% head sail, which adds to the ease of handling as well, of course, as you're not, you have no jib sheets to manage. Nice little stainless detail on the anchor locker as well, just to let the chain road out. Furlex furling gear on the bar there. A couple of vents on the uh, floor deck there and a hatch for ventilation. Features a fairly conventional main sail in a stack pack. Spinnaker poles stowed there as well on the front of the mast. Two spreader rig. Slight aft sweep in the spreaders, so no need for check stays or anything like that. Throughout, she's got Anderson stainless steel winches. All control lines led aft, and they come down either side of the, uh, the cockpit combing uh, to two banks of jammers. So again, most things can be handled from the cockpit. Tidy spray hood. Well fitted. So moving aft, you can see the, the wheel is set well aft in the boat, which is quite nice actually. A bit of additional storage there by way of lazarettes as well. Large destroyer type wheel, a binnacle compass, by thruster and windless controls and also a breaker there for the bilge as well. Main sheet nice and accessible just in front of the helming position. And you see the jammers there coming in on port side. There's also a bank of jammers on starboard side. Which basically means that you've got a nice sort of spaghetti free cockpit. Substantial teak cockpit table there. So leaving a really nice clutter-free area within the cockpit. So scrub teak companionway doors. So stepping below then, bright and airy is the theme of this boat throughout. It's a very open plan, which is really nice. Um, Forward-facing chart table to starboard with a seat. Control panels there, switch panels for your electrical distribution. S200 remote control for the autopilot, which is handy. Icon VHF and large plotter. The seat is fixed, although the bracket detaches quite easily so that it can, it can double up for additional seating for the dining area as well. Ample wet locker. Not a feature you see in a lot of modern boats. Stainless and teak companionway steps, and then to port you've got this really bright and airy raised deck saloon.
I should add there's this huge amount of storage beneath the seating in this deck saloon as well. Overhead hatches. It's a lovely satin mahogany finish throughout and I have to say the interior is faultless. So stepping down into the galley, the galley is fitted on both port and starboard. The main part of the galley is linear, it's on the starboard side of the yacht. That's a stainless steel two burner stove there, double sinks. And then over to port, you have additional work surface on the galley. This houses a drawer refrigeration, microwave and additional storage. You can see the detail there, you've also got a, a large front opening fridge freezer as well. Quite a bit of storage underneath the, the saloon floor also. So moving forward, forward heads, nice bit of Corian. Again, satin mahogany up high, and then GRP and melamine finished below. And Jabsco manual marine heads there. V double in the bow. Again, the cabinetry throughout is, is just very, very neat, very tidy, well finished. A bit of additional hanging storage behind the door there as well. And back into the saloon. And then stepping down into this area which is doubles up, it's, it's, it's multifunctional. It's a nice little snug. The centre console there between the seats does lift out and create an additional sea berth. Then you've got the top of the engine box, uh, which I'll just flip up. And there we have it, the D255, and like the rest of the yacht, uh, you can see the engine bay is, is large, well ventilated, well insulated, and um, spotless. Now just above the engine box, there's a drop-down panel which can house a flat screen. In this case, the owners have used a, a laptop, but it would quite happily accommodate a small flat screen TV as well. So it does create a really nice little snug area. Moving aft. Ample centre line double berth. There's nice, nice little port lights in the transom there as well, throwing a bit of additional light in. Everywhere you look, there's oodles of storage. Ensuite heads to port. Again, Avonite, satin mahogany, and nice clean melamine finish throughout. And Jabsco manual marine heads. And stepping through the shower, we have a fairly cavernous locker. And this is accessed from both the shower and from the cockpit as well. There's a hatch in the cockpit. And as you can see, there's quite a bit of stuff in here with dinghy outboard and so on, but actually it's, it's, it's very, very ample storage. And just peeping through there, you can also see the calorifier, which is easily accessed. Battery isolators. So one, one feature of the auto is that she, is, she certainly isn't short of storage. Moving forward then again through that snug area and back to the saloon. The yacht's currently on her berth on the south coast here and available for viewing seven days. So please call for further details or if you would like to arrange viewing.